Oh, boy. Orchestra will be starting on stage in about 10 minutes. Oh, Get everything ready now. Bring out the hounds. Even though we're supposed to be ugly stepsisters, he was a little too ugly. When I first started here, I hadn't done a lot of makeup. Do you remember how bad I was at it? I do. I recall it all. <laughs> yeah. I was really bad. Give me shovel. Apply makeup generously. I get to highlight my Adam's apple. So that's another fun thing for the girl to have a big Adam's apple. We think that's kind of funny. Hot. Look how pretty you guys look. You are pretty. In exactly <laughs> in the way the stepmother would. And we got jewelry, too. It's always nice. Am I the only adult who has to have this done for? Yes. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and there she is. You look pretty, Reed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Here we go. You rich! And don't spill a drop! <laughs> and bring me my sausage! <laughs> The Children's Theatre Company has had a company. The, the reason company's in the title is that company was core to the entire idea of this theater. It's rare for two reasons. One is the freedom, because, you know, each season I, I will be casting these now five people. And if you look at the history of world theater, Shakespeare, Moliere, Brecht, on and on, the history of great theater is the history of companies. And here I was, all set to be the next you? I am amazed he didn't ask for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, whatever. Your breath is so bad, I never know whether to offer you a mint or some toilet paper. Oh, is that so? Well, I have a few things. When you look around America, there are not that many companies that have full-time seasonal actors. I think it must be like a handful, right? It's if, incredibly rare now. Yeah, yeah. so we're, it's, it's unique for us. One thing we always talk about is the shorthand of it, you know, and, and, and what I mean by that is, in a rehearsal process, when we're in the room together and we start, the depth you're able to get at the material and, and what it is you're trying to tell in the story, we can get there a lot quicker, it seems like, because we have that history with one another to sort of anticipate choices and reactions and things like that. And there's a comfort not just with each other, which you're talking about, but there's a comfort with the director. And as for the rest of you, oh, yes? I'm sure that the prince will want to know. Uh -huh. If you're available in case it doesn't work out. Absolutely. You know, because you never know second marriage. Okay. Yes. Some directors okay. don't want any preconditions on who they cast. I feel the opposite. I feel like it gives us wings. There's kind of that, that tremendous opportunity to take enormous risks without the fear of failure because your director is somebody who you trust and know that he trusts you and your fellow actors trust you and you trust them. And they them. really enjoy your failures then. <laughs> yeah. And they can throw them oh, back yeah. at you down the line. By order of his majesty, Prince Eric, each and every lady in the kingdom is to attempt to place upon her foot the glass slipper. Mr. Drake is a kind of sage and wizard. He journeys so deep into the metaphors, and he'll, he'll come back, and he's been up all night making either like biblical or, or literature connections or spiritual connections that are absolutely extraordinary and force you to think deeper about the piece. I've been at the theater for 42 years. The nature of the children's theater, the storytelling, where we talk about life and death problems that young people are very interested in, that, to me, is a compelling thing. Oh, the world awaits you. Now, over here, Randy, this is my baby Pearl. Huh? Hey, Randy. Boy, it's a good thing I have a library card, because I am totally checking you out. <laughs> Dean is an extraordinarily gifted actor. He understands comedy so deeply. You know, this, the clarity of the setup, the action, the reaction, the specificity of each moment. Can you see I am trying to get into this harness? Now pull! Hurry mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> up, Cinderella. Breathe in. And there, all finished. How does it feel? It's perfect. <laughs> We're always searching for the next thing to make it a little bit better, to, to make the joke work better, to make the dramatic moment land better, to listen to the audience. There was something vaguely familiar about her. Yeah. <laughs> O-M-G. L-O-L. K. 
F C. Reed is one of the kindest and most generous people I've ever had the good fortune to meet in my life. His preparation is extraordinary. I mean, he creates full backstory. He, every single second of every single moment that he's on that stage, then when he comes to the table, it is a mix of such extraordinary heart, presence, and unbelievable comic abandon. I did, what, four shows in college? And one was a comedy. All drama. So it was all drama, drama it's all we school. did. And then we started here. It was like, <laughs> comedy, okay. <laughs> and then so there scary. was like physical comedy. I think I've done that in high school, but I really have no idea what I'm doing. We'll see what happens. But if you could combine like Jerry's thoughtfulness and knowledge of story and like Tracy's mm -hmm. truth and Reed's heart and Dean's physical beauty and clarity, you would have like this creature. That is Autumn. <laughs> you know? You would have me. Oh, girls. These are our invitations to the ball at the castle tonight. This one's yours. Oh, it smells like paper. This one's yours. <laughs> this one's mine. <laughs> for me? Cinderella at the ball. Hashtag awkward. <laughs> oh, wait, girls. She's serious. Oh. <laughs> Autumn Ness is our Lucille Ball. You know, to combine that kind of, you know, extraordinary beauty with that kind of comic abandon and that kind of heart. She's someone who has a kind of both verbal and comic invention that is just stunning. I mean, watching her improvise with an audience and the quickness of her mind, it's just like a freight train that has never seen a break. It just flies. The minute we leave, you are to mend the socks, Ooh. bake the bread, <laughs> polish the floors, <laughs> and then maybe you can have a little chat with your diary. Oh, no, 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 I was going down to Howard University to audition for Performing Apprentices. And Tracy did an audition for me that just blew me away. I was like, my God, she's so talented. She's so present. She's so funny. She can sing and move. And so invited her up here. So Cinderella is her, is her first show as a company member. And it's been fun watching Tracy join this dynamic. It's Being a PA, what was it, six years ago, a performing apprentice, and watching these four on stage, there's not a single person that when they're on stage, you can't take their eyes off of, and so you put all of them on stage together. It's a feast for all of the senses. Autumn Reed, Tracy, and I were all uh, performing apprentices here at the theater also. It seems so supportive to find a place where you could feel like you were at home and you were taken care of. But welcomes everyone into this theater life, kids and uh, other apprentices and young adults. God bless you, gentlemen, God bless you. If you haven't got a hate man, you can God bless you. You know, we have a, a theater arts training program. We work with a lot of young actors. And having a company of actors who are committed to making sure that young people are respected, challenged, and treated like professionals, means that these young actors get to be mentored by some of the best actors in this country. Working with the CTC Acting Company has probably been and probably will always be one of the greatest experiences. It was one thing to, to go there and interact as an actor working through that process, but it was another to just see, oh wow, you know, this is what these people do when I'm not seeing them as characters. To meet them as, as real people and to learn from them in the rehearsal room was really something else, it was really cool. The thing about the Children's Theatre Company is, is that the idea is right. It's been so fabulous for the community, I think, in nurturing all these other theatres that have sprung up because we create an audience of young people that eventually come and grow and go into all the other theatres in town. We're making theatre for the most important audience in the world. 
you know, for young people and families. And if we inspire that family, if we inspire those young people with the power of theater, its beauty, you've created a lifelong curiosity and hunger for the arts. So the stakes are high, the responsibility is epic, and making sure that we deliver that every day, day in and out, is why we show up.